Hey everybody, let's learn how to do a bloom recipe swipe, a uh, palette knife swipe. So I'm using kind of a standard Shelly Art bloom recipe, which there are lots of them. Everybody seems to have their own personal recipe for it. Um, so I'm using, I think, what's relatively standard, but I've tweaked it slightly. So I've mixed this up just in an old varnish bottle. I'm using a two to one ratio of untinted semi-gloss house paint, uh, two parts of that to one part of polycrylic. And I mix that up ahead of time, and then I mix that with my paint colors until they reach the right consistency. So it's about one to one paint to medium, and it ends up being a very, very thick consistency. It has to flow. So as long as it flows pretty well, um, it's okay that it's significantly thicker than other pouring recipes. That's just how the bloom technique works. So my colors today are my dark navy, the phthalo blue mixed with black, metallic teal, and then I'm switching it up a little bit with my blue colors, and I've got this metallic sea mist and this pale gray blue. This is a combination that I really love. And then my cell activator, this is a little bit unconventional. It is Amsterdam titanium white paint, but instead of using the Australian Floetrol to make it the cell activator, I just added water. So it's relatively thin, um, but it, just Amsterdam paint by itself, can produce some pretty great lacing with a regular bloom pour. All right, shall we get started? So my pillow is this um, semi-gloss house paint that I got at my local hardware store. So I'm just using a cup to sort of dipper it out. And I'm still figuring out in Bloom recipes how, you know, what, what the optimal pillow paint is and how thick it should be. But this particular can, which is not super, super thick, has worked pretty well for me. So that's what I'll continue to use, but I'm still experimenting. Okay, so I've put on, I don't know, two and a half ounces of pillow paint. That's, it looks like a lot. But I wanna have plenty of paint. So let me get just a little bit more. Because usually to cover a, an eight by eight canvas, which is what I'm using, you need about four to four and a half ounces of paint. So since with a bloom pour, most of your bulk is the pillow paint, then the colors are kind of secondary to that. I wanna make sure I have plenty of pillow. Okay. I'll give the pillow paint a quick torch to get rid of some air bubbles. Not too many air bubbles there. Okay, so with a bloom swipe, a uh, palette knife swipe, instead of working from the center and either blowing or swiping outwards, I like to just kind of cover the pillow with a, um, just kind of, random random spread of color so you want plenty of each color on its own but also plenty of the colors overlapping each other which is going to make the really cool effects And 
of course you could make like a standard puddle and then swipe it I just like kind of the random um, spread that this gives me because then we get some of every color and some of the colors blending and I just think that's really nice okay so now I have two different sizes of palette knife. I think I'm going to start with the larger one, but I may use this sort of medium sized one if I need it. Okay, so my cell activator, I'm just going to pour a little bit right here on, on my surface. You can pour it straight on your plastic tablecloth. I've got some freezer paper down to catch the drips. Um, but you just kind of coat the bottom in it and then how am I gonna do this I'm gonna start up here and gently pull it across and then you wipe it off that is so pretty Let me grab my straw and see if I can open up some cells here where it's where there's a lot of white. Okay, that's brought up some more cells there, which is nice. Okay, so I'm going to need to swipe again. And I need to figure out how I'm going to do that without destroying all this lovely stuff that I've just made. I think I'm going to use the big one again, dip it in the cell activator, and this time I'm going to go that way. Okay, I don't know that it was a great idea for me to come back because the cell activator was no longer being pushed across the surface. So let me see if I can just take this and take some of this white cell, act cell activator that's on the top and take that over this streak that doesn't have much cells. Just putting a tiny bit of paint on it to begin with. These colors and these cells are really amazing. Um, I'm losing some of it off the edge there. I guess maybe I had more pillow paint than I needed. Let me see if I can open up some cells right here in this white, and then I'll go ahead and stretch it. Okay, there doesn't seem to be tons underneath this white. So when I tilt, I'm probably gonna try to lose a bunch of that. Let me put on my gloves and then we'll stretch it. Okay, so already I can tell that this corner, I don't want to lose a lot of it. So instead of pouring the whole thing off, I'm gonna add some fresh pillow paint here to the corner. That way when I stretch, it will move across more easily. Okay, I'm gonna start by going this way because I don't love what's happening down in this corner. So I'm just very carefully sort of moving it side to side. It's like you're walking it back and forth and it helps you to stretch it without making the cells go too weird. So now I'm gonna bring the paint down to this corner. And 
then bring it back a little bit. Look how pretty that is. That is insanely pretty. Okay, let me wipe off my hands so I don't drip all over the painting while I'm figuring out what to do next. Okay, I gotta come across this corner. So, just slowly and carefully. You watch where the paint is moving. There's always a section where the paint is heaviest. That's what we call the weight of the paint. So you try to get the weight of the paint where you want it before you start stretching it. Okay. Unfortunately, I just lost some of what I really liked because there was a section that I didn't like and I had to get it off the edge. Okay, so the last spot to get is this one right here. I really love these cells, so I don't want to completely lose them, but I do have to stretch it somewhat that direction. So I'm gonna pick it up and then move the weight of the paint back kind of towards the middle of the canvas some, so I don't lose too much off that bottom edge as I'm stretching it this direction. Come on, cells. Okay. That's close enough to the corner that I can bring it back now. Okay, so what I need to do now is figure out kind of the layout. So I'm just gonna tilt it around until I'm happy with how the cells look, how the flow is going. And I, I think that's it right there. Okay, let me take off my gloves because I think I'm happy with that. Somehow I got paint on my fingers even while wearing gloves. I don't know how that worked. Guess I didn't take them off right. Okay, this is really cool. I don't love this white corner, but I don't know that I can fix it without losing all of that. isn't meant to be a blown out pour, but that helped to cover the corner. I love the lacing and the cells that I'm getting throughout here. I love the big, big lacing here and the little stuff in here. And even here where there isn't lacing, it still creates this beautiful feeling of flowing water. So I love this. Um, okay, let me just scrape the edges of the canvas to help stop the paint from dripping down too much over the edges. And then I'll give you a close up. Okay, I am officially in love with this piece. Look at that gorgeous lacing. All those intricate bubbles. And then more lacing around here. I 
I can't wait to see how it looks when it's dry and you can see the metallic colors because I can tell that through here is some of that metallic sea foam, which is so pretty when it's dry and shimmery. But man, that turned out well. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you try one of these on your own. It's really not that hard. And uh, especially with the, um, the easier cell activator, it makes it much more affordable for those of us that don't have a huge painting budget. So thanks for watching. I hope you come back and watch some of my other videos. See you next time.